Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we are going to be working on this Batman 1966 Shakespeare bust. That's right, the bust that he would use to open up those fake doors behind him and go down the bat poles with Robin. This is actually a file you can get over on my site. The link and the coupon code will be in the description below. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I printed it, finished it, painted it, and wired it up. That's right, so the LED goes on and everything. This was a super, super fun build to make. Let's go behind the fake wall and I'll show you how I did it. So the modeling and detail on this is crazy, but look at this print effect. There is a gigantic hole in Shakespeare's head. So instead of printing it all over again and wasting the the resin and the time, I took a really aggressive rasp to this thing, and I wanted to see if I could fix this. And I really gouged away to make it as level as possible, then worked it with an 80 grit and up to a 120 to sort of get it all smoothed out. Then what I did was I went ahead and used one of my favorite things with a lot of things in modeling and a lot of things in making stuff is this epoxy putty. And of course, links for all this stuff will be below. And this is a two-part epoxy and it hardens up pretty quickly. I usually give it at least 24 hours though. And it is totally sandable, totally paintable. It's great stuff. And I just work it into the crack. Now, yes, that is a gigantic hole. So what I do is I just really sort of pile it in there so it holds up and uh, fills the space. And I just keep working it in. And there's a lot of excess, but we're going to take care of that later on. Now, I want to smooth the edges up a little bit. And what I like to use for that are these, first of course I do it with my fingers, and then I go ahead and use these little sort of, um, they're clay working tools, uh, and they work really well with this kind of stuff. They're silicone, and I really, really like them. But it's obviously still, I've got way too much on there. So I go ahead and just use a scraper to scrape it off, and then I sort of rinse and repeat, right? I just keep adding a little bit more, and then sanding it and smoothing it out until I get it just the way I want it. Now, there was also a little piece in the bottom where this has, uh, you know, I forgot a support or two, but after using the putty, it rounds out really nice and looks just like the rest of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit everything with some sandpaper. I start at about, usually with this kind of thing, since it's pretty smooth already, uh, a 320 and go to 420. And as you can see, this is what the scar looks like after some putty and some sanding. It looks pretty sharp. You'd never even know it was there. Now, I use this uh, metallic oil rubbed as the base coat. Now, I know it's super dark, and this isn't where it's going to end, but I want this for the darkness on the cracks and crevices. So, I just give that some spray paint, and there it goes. Again, crazy dark, but it is for a reason. Now, I decided I was going to try some rub and buff, and a little bit of rub and buff goes a long way. I'm using uh, a cloth or a paper towel, and I'm just rubbing it through out the model. And you can see how it gives it that really realistic, bronzy looking uh, color to it. Problem is, it isn't really bronzy, it's more gold. But here's what I was talking about with having those areas look so distressed. So now we're going to work on the hinge. Now the file comes with a print that's for a hinge, but I think using a little piece of brass actually works out quite a bit better. It's a lot more sturdy, and I would probably recommend using that because then it just pops right in there and you're able to use the head as a hinge. Now let's work on the electronics. So here's an LED, and I like to test these. Now, of course, the longer metal part is positive. We're going to use one of these little dial switches, turn on my favorite soldering iron, put on some heat shrink, and just start working on this switch. It's a simple switch. You've got power going to the switch, and then uh, to the battery, and then to the LED, so that when you are all said and done, you don't forget your heat sink in there so you don't have any wires touching and shorting out. And this is a method I like to do. I put some solder on the item and then I put the wire on and I just sort of give it a little bit of work and there it goes. You turn the dial and it goes on. 
Now, of course, you know, I didn't know how big the switch would be, so I went ahead and used my favorite uh, drill bits. They're specifically for plastic. Again, links will be in the description. Now, this is sped up 200%. You want to take this super slow or you will crack it. And now we're just going to give everything a coat of paint. Now, I didn't prime any of this. It's pretty small stuff. And this Vallejo model paint really does a great job going over this plastic, so I didn't worry about it. Of course, bigger parts I'll usually always prime first. Okay, so this is a little bulb fixture that I made. I just put it with some transparent resin. It goes right in there. And now... Going back to the color, I was not happy with this gold. It turned out way, way too gold. Nothing like the reference. So I mixed up some Vallejo bronze and some dark copper and ran it through the airbrush. And as you can see, we're getting a much more bronzy patina to it. The gold still works, and I'm really, really happy with how the color turned out. Now we're going to start wiring it up. I feed the LED through and I go ahead and then push all the wiring in. You might have noticed I put a little bit more wire on the battery compartment so it would be low enough that I can get at it through the bottom. Then we just glue the LED into the bulb and put the bulb in its place. Put the dial on with a nut. This was cool. I didn't have to glue it. I just used the nut that was put right in there with it and feed it through the larger hole with a little super glue on it to make it stick. Turn the dial to where I want it, hold it for a second, and then put on the knob. And that's it. It is ready to go. We're ready to put the head on. Head goes on. We feed our uh, bar through it like we showed earlier. And you're going to have to tweak this around a little bit. Sometimes things line up. Sometimes they don't. We put the old battery in, and it is ready to go. Tip the head back, and to the bat poles, old chum. Now, as you can see in the build, there are some things you're going to have to fool with. You know, I don't know what size your dial knob is going to be, things like that. So, yes, you are going to have to monkey with the files a little bit, but not much, and everything is included. Again, this was a real fun one for me. I've been wanting to put this thing together for quite a while. You know, I'll do test prints, but nothing like a finished thing like this. And I'm super happy with how this guy turned out. I'm glad I went ahead and fixed the colors on it. I love how the light comes on. It's just a fun prop and it looks really cool. Now, you don't have to wire it. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You could just print it like this and glue the top on so that it's just sort of standing there and people know exactly what it is. But it, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Now, again, if you are interested in this file, the links are in the description below, again, with the coupon code to get it on sale. So again, Super fun build, I really loved it. I hope you did too. If you wanna see more, please click like and subscribe. Hit that little bell to know when I'm gonna have the next video up and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.